Hey everybody, welcome back to a new video. In this video, I wanna show you how you can add an additional 500 watts of solar panel input to your larger Blue Eddy power stations or even their external batteries. Now, the way that we're gonna be accomplishing this is through the Blue Eddy DC charging enhancer. Now, this is a specific charger that you can purchase from Blue Eddy at $199. Now, I did purchase this with my own money. This is not a sponsored video because I wanted to see how well this works and to see how many watts we can actually get. So in this video, we're gonna be doing extensive testing on it. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. Now here's a closer look of the charging enhancer. Now you have your power input right here, and there are two adapters that come in the box. One is designed for solar panels with MC4 connections, and the other one comes with a 12 volt cigarette style plug. Now these use XT90 connections, if you haven't seen that before. These are two female XT90 connections, and this is a male XT90 connection, so you can make your own adapter if you want. Now, as for the power output, you have a 7909 barrel connection, which is designed specifically for Blue Eddy power stations or their expandable batteries. Now, the Blue Eddy charging enhancer works by taking a lower input voltage from solar panels or from a battery, and it boosts it all the way up to 58.8 volts. Now, that voltage may sound familiar because that's the same voltage that the AC chargers use on Blue Eddy products. So technically, you're taking a DC input source like solar panels or battery, and you're boosting it up to 58.8 volts so you can add additional power into your power station. For example, on the Blue Eddy AC200 Max, you could have 900 watts of solar plugged into the regular charging port, and then you could plug in more solar panels to the charging enhancer so you can boost up the max amount of solar into your power station from 900 all the way up to 1400 watts. Now, if you happen to have an expandable battery from Blue Eddy, for example, the B230, does not support charging from solar panels directly. You have to either use a AC wall charger or you have to have this connected to the AC 200 Max or another power station, and then you can charge it up using solar panels. So if you purchase the Blue Eddy charging enhancer, you can actually plug that into this wall charging port here and get charging of 400 to 500 watts off of solar panels. So you can either charge this um, by itself or you can have this connected to the AC200 Max. You could have the 900 watts coming into this, and then you can have the 400 to 500 watts coming to this. So the charging enhancer allows you to charge your power station and batteries much faster to get that extra solar input. Now this charging enhancer also works on the AC300 and the brand new AC500 and their corresponding batteries, the B300 and the B300S. All you have to do is plug it into the 7909 charging port and you can add the 400 to 500 watts of charging via solar panels. Now I'm excited to test this out, but before jumping into the actual testing, let me explain the voltage input limits on this. So the owner's manual states that you can plug in any DC source from 12 volts all the way up to 60 volts. So you can plug in batteries in combinations of series or solar panels in combinations of series as long as the maximum voltage doesn't go over 60 volts. So let's go ahead and jump into some testing. We're gonna test with a 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery, see how much we can get. We'll test with a 24 volt uh, power source and then we'll also test with multiple solar panel combinations to see if we can get the maximum 500 watt output. Okay, so here's the first test. We have the charging enhancer plugged into this 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery, plugged into the AC charging port. Let's see how much we're getting. Okay, so with the charger plugged in, we're getting around 130 watts max and it kind of drops down to 97 watts. And you can see it's putting out 54.2 volts and it kind of does a little loop from 97 all the way up to 130 and just kind of resets back again. So we are getting additional power from this 12 volt battery. Now I have this inline watt meter plugged into the battery to see how much power we're pulling. It has a horrible screen, so I had to turn the lights off. But you can see we're averaging around 9 amps at 113 watts. So it appears that the DC charging enhancer is fairly efficient. Now in the next test, I have a 24 volt 10 amp power supply that I have plugged into the charging enhancer. Now this is kind of to simulate a 24 volt battery or a high end 12 volt solar panel. So let's go ahead and see how much power we're getting in. Now charging at the 24 volt source, we're getting around 230 watts input on the battery. And we're sitting at around 54.6 volts. Now this voltage will go up over time because this is the actual voltage of the battery. So when a 16S lithium iron phosphate battery is completely full, it's right around 58.4 volts. Now the charging enhancer does have a built-in fan to keep it cool. And what's nice is it only runs as it's needed. It does not run all the time. 
And as I've tested it at these lower wattage levels, it doesn't run that often. As you can see, it just turned off. I wanna go ahead and do some solar testing with the Blue Eddy charging enhancer now. So I actually have two arrays that I use every single day. I have a 975 watt array on my shed roof. And then I have a ground mount system that has 725 watts. So I have the larger uh, array plugged into the actual MPPT charge controller on this. And then I have the smaller array plugged into the charging enhancer. So they're both plugged in. Let's go ahead and see how much power we're getting in on the AC200 Max. Now, as for the solar conditions today, it's around 95 degrees. We do have a few high clouds, so we're definitely not gonna get the maximum output from these solar panels. Okay, so we're getting around 750 watts input using the large array on my shed roof. And then with the charging enhancer plugged in, we're getting around 340 watts. So adding those up together is around 1100 watts when before we would only see around 750. So it is nice to get that additional power. Now, some of you may be wondering, well, we were only getting 340 watts charging input while using the Blue Eddy charging enhancer, yet we had 700 watts of solar panels plugged in. So why weren't we getting more power? And it actually has to do with the limitation of the charging enhancer and the input voltage. So let me explain. So when you have three sets of solar panels, at least 12 volt panels connected together in series, the voltage is actually going to be over 60 volts. You have to think about the open circuit voltage, which is the maximum amount of voltage that your solar panels will get. And that goes over 60 volts. For example, I have three of those panels connected together in series right now and I have a voltmeter here. And I just want to show you guys what the actual power comes out to be here. Let me see here, okay. So I'm getting 63.8 volts um, on three of those solar panels connected together in series. So just to be safe, I wanted to connect two of the panels together in parallel, the other two together in parallel, and then I connected them together in series. So we did not have any issues going over voltage. But now that we have that test out of the way, I wanna go ahead and try connecting up three of these solar panels to the Blue Eddy charging enhancer, even though it goes over the 60 volts, and we'll see what happens. So let's go ahead and plug this in. Hopefully we don't see any smoke or fire as we uh, connect this up. Okay, so the relay just clicked on. Let's see if we get any charging input. Okay, so I've left this actually connected for five minutes. We're still getting zero watts charging input. So it appears my three 180 watt Bouge RV solar panels have too high of a voltage to charge with the Blue Eddy uh, charging enhancer. So um, I would be interested to see uh, what type of configuration you guys are using. Do any of you guys have a set of 3S solar panels connected in and working with the Blue Eddy charging enhancer? For me, it is not working properly. So I'm gonna go back to a lower voltage input. Let's go ahead and test with two of my Blue Eddy SP350s. We can put two of those in parallel and let's see if we get any more charging input on the AC200 Max. Okay, so I have both Blue Eddy SP350s connected together in parallel in the yard and they are facing the sun properly. And you can see we're getting around 330 watts charging input. And this is very similar to what we got with the Bouge RV solar panels connected together in a 2S configuration. Okay, so kind of a bummer. We aren't able to get the maximum amount of power out of this, at least with my solar panel configuration. We saw a total of 350 watts to 330 watts because the solar panels that I have just put out too much voltage. If you guys are using this and it's working properly, throw a comment down below. Let us know what solar panels you're using and what configuration you're using and the total watts that you're seeing. Because when I tried it out today with three of my 180 watt Bouge RV solar panels, it did not work properly. Now I mentioned in the beginning of the video that you can actually purchase your own XT90 pigtail so you can make your own adapter. This is an XT90 female connection. And all you have to do is pick one of these up and then you can put whatever connection you want on the end. So you can make your own custom adapters and they work on the charger and on the Blue Eddy larger power station. So I'll include the link to this down in the video description if you guys are interested in picking up your own XT90 pigtail so you can make your own adapter. Now I actually went on Blue Eddy's website to see if their solar panels like the SP120 or the SP200 or the PV120 or PV200 had lower voltage um, for this specifically, like maybe they designed this around their solar panels. And actually all their solar panels have an open circuit voltage of over 21 volts. So it looks like you can't even connect three of their solar panels together in series. Maybe this is broken. Maybe I got like kind of a defective unit, 
only seeing 350 to 330 watts. You know, yes, it's good to get that extra power into your power station, but not what I was expecting, especially at the $199 price point for this charger. So anyway, guys, that's everything that I wanted to talk about in the video today. Like I said, just a little bit bummed here. Um, you know, it's still a good way to get extra power, but I was not seeing what was advertised. So I'd love to see your guys' feedback. So throw a comment down below. Thanks for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you liked the testing video today. Thanks for watching to the end of the video. We'll see you guys in the next one.